Hey everybody, this is Kelly Baker with Arkansas Outdoor Adventure Training. Uh, living, the, uh, living the Arkansas lifestyle today. Uh, the cliche, I've got my overalls on. Uh, we're out here today to talk about the survival kit. Uh, my survival kit may be a little bit different than some that you've seen. Uh, I want to talk about the components. This is going to be part one in a series. Uh, series we're going to be going over what I keep in my kit today. And then after that, we're going to be going in the other series kind of the nitty-gritty of each item. We're going to be talking about uh, how to use each item, uh, get into some uh, fire making, water procurement, things like that. But today, strictly going to be uh, what I keep in my kit, how big my kit is, what a kit's good for, that kind of stuff. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to show you the bag that I carry my stuff in. This is a Camelback Mule. You can get, uh, you can get different sized bags. This one's been a good bag size for me. Uh, it's not too big, it's not too obtrusive. I can carry it in most places. Uh, it's a day size pack. It's got the uh, got the bottom bottom pack in there with a couple of extra pockets. It's got that top pack there. It's just kind of empty. You put a lot of stuff in that. On the back, inside the back, it's got a uh, 1.5 liter hydration bladder for uh, storing water, carrying water, procuring water. You can dip it right up out of a spring or a lake with that. And then uh, out of that comes uh, comes a drinking straw, so you can actually, as you're wearing this thing, drink on the move. Uh, this pack uh, retails for about uh, 120 bucks, and you can get a cheaper version of it at some super center, some uh, some different stores. You can get a you can get a, a different brand. I think uh, Red Rock makes a pretty good product for uh, around 40 bucks retail. Uh, this one was presented to me. Uh, on the military side, so that's the one that I've been carrying, but uh, it's definitely been decent. Not too big, uh, just about the right size for me to carry everything that I need in it. Now, a lot of people ask me about bug out bags, and a lot of people are buying the uh, huge rucksacks, you know, the Alice packs, the Molly rucks. For me, a bug out bag should be small, it should be lightweight, uh, carry what I need to get me from point A to point B. A uh, bug out bag is to get you from one area to your bug out location. That's where all your heavy stuff is. Extra clothes, boots, uh, food items, that should be at your bug out location. Uh, if you've got a 70 pound bag on your back and you're walking down the street, uh, whether that be urban or wilderness, I promise that's going to make you a big, slow target. Uh, you're going to look like the guy who's got more than me and I'm going to come take your stuff. So if you want a lightweight pack that's, uh, that's uh, not too obtrusive, uh, you can you can even put this in a camera bag. Uh, you can put it in any kind of bag you want. You know, a kid's school pack for uh, high school could be pink and black. Doesn't look like you got a bunch of survival stuff in there. So I like uh, the camo color on mine because I can stash it if I want to. I can I can uh, hide this under some brush stuff like that, and I can come back and pick it up later if I have to move quick and I have to put it away. So anyway, that's the bag that I carry mine in. And we're going to go into uh, some of the components first component that I, any any survival kit, bug out bag, anything like that's going to be a knife. Uh, the knife you choose is pretty much up to you. The one that I carry is a Topps USA, Tom Brown Scout Jr. Uh, Tom Brown, as we all know, Godfather Survival. Uh, that's great. I carry it because it's a good knife. You can get the same knife about $20 cheaper, but it doesn't have Tom Brown's name on it. Uh, nice point, nice 1095 high carbon steel blade, my car to handle. Uh, Kydex sheath. You can carry this Kydex sheath with a clip on the back on your belt. As you'll see I carry mine sideways most of the time. You can carry it upside down on your pack. You can carry it right side up. It's got a 360 degree swivel on it so you can carry it any way you want. It's got a positive lock in it. Uh, that one retails like I say about one one twenty. Uh, for people that say you know I'm not gonna spend 120 bucks on a knife. You don't have to. That's my, that's my personal preference. I like the high carbon steel. I like the made in the USA. Uh, this happens to be an M-Tech, uh, solid 440 stainless from end to end, so you know it's a full tang because you can see it. It's got a decent thickness. It's thick enough that it's not going to break. Good for batoning, but uh, you can also, uh, it's thin enough you can lash this to a stick for a spear. It's got a cord wrap handle. This one's leather, which I, I'll probably end up putting paracord on this, but. Uh, the leather handle gives you a nice grip, comes in a decent sheath, 
This one runs for about 15 bucks. Not an American made product, but definitely a decent buy for 15 bucks. So you do have options. Uh, second pick for me in my particular bag. First one I carry the tops, which is a fixed blade. Second one I carry is a Leatherman. This happens to be a Leatherman Wave. Uh, it's not the cheapest that you can get as far as multi-tools, but it's not the most expensive either. Uh, Leatherman Wave I like because uh, it's got several, several blades, several tools. They all open and close easily, just like that. Just a flick of the, uh, just a flick of the blade opens any of those blades, files, saw, anything right up. I don't have long fingernails. I keep them trimmed because I'm always out. And I don't want to get an infection under my nails. But uh, it's got your pliers. It's got uh, several tools inside of it. It's got a Phillips head screwdriver. Turn that around. You got your Phillips or your slot head, either one. Uh, can openers, pretty much everything that uh, multi-tool would have. The most uh, old-time backwoodsman would say, you know, multi-tools are a joke. You got to have a fixed blade knife. Well, I do carry a fixed blade knife, but uh, I promise, if you've ever tried to replace a gas line on a dirt bike with a fixed blade knife, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So that's why I carry a multi-tool. Uh, so I say get a multi-tool or get a sense of humor because you are going to need it. Next thing we'll go into. Uh, pretty much everybody's got one of these in their kit. You may have one laying around the house. Uh, just a simple emergency blanket. It's the Mylar kind, the kind that uh, if it nicks, it tears up. But I do carry duct tape in my pack, so I'm not too worried about it nicking. Uh, it's a couple of three bucks. They do, uh, they do work on uh, getting the sun off the top of your head. They're great for signaling. They do reflect 80% of your body heat. I've tested them. I've used them. I know two or three dollar item people don't think they'll work that great but they do work even my wife who uh, who stays cold a lot she put one of these on in the van one night and she uh, she warmed up pretty quick so they do work two dollar item keep it in your pack food stuff uh, talk about food items I've got a few different ones here I'll start with this one uh, real simple beef jerky full package I don't go with the little teeny tiny one when it comes to food you know uh, if you're starving you're hungry you're hypothermic you don't have anything to eat this is a guarantee. Uh, you don't have to fish for it. You don't have to hunt for it and try to trap it. Uh, full package, you got protein, you got fat, you got carbohydrates right there in a package for five, six bucks. Depending on what brand you get. Uh, next package, a couple of granola bars uh, and a cigarette lighter, but a couple of granola bars and uh, you know, the brand is up to you. I happen to like this brand, but uh, I like the oatmeal raisin. They taste pretty good. Uh, that's why I picked these. But uh, got some calories there. Got some sugars there. Uh, got a little extra energy. Uh, got some fat. So also for uh, figure four deadfalls for some of you true backwoods survivalists or if you're building any kind of trap. They're also really good for uh, for squirrels. Squirrels love these things, so it's a good bait. Bait you can eat. Like I say, I've got a cigarette lighter in there, and I've got these scattered throughout my pack. I usually keep everything in a Ziploc bag. Uh, Ziploc bags are good for procuring water. They're good for waterproofing stuff, such as cigarette lighters. Cigarette lighter is probably the easiest way to start a fire. Uh, you got some tinder. you got some uh, just man-made or natural. It doesn't really make any difference. Cigarette lighters always work, even when you're hypothermic. gets cold outside, give it a little hot breath, it'll work. Uh, next food item that I've got a couple of different things in this pack uh, Lipton cup of soup or whatever brand cup of soup you want doesn't really matter uh, cold nights you're hypothermic this could save your life even on nights when you're not hypothermic and may not save your life but uh, this stuff's going to pep you up it's going to give you a real morale boost uh, cook that right up in, uh, in my canteen cup over there, all you gotta do is add a little bit of water. Uh, simple dehydrated foods, everybody's always asking me what are the best foods, and they spend a fortune for dehydrated stuff. It's a dehydrated food, it cost a dollar at dollar store. Uh, save money where you can. I got six kids, it's a dollar at the dollar store. So, you know, don't make it more expensive than it has to be. Uh, I don't have any $20 meals in my pack, but it's a dollar at the dollar store. Pick up a few. Also, a dollar at the local dollar store, uh, vitamin C emergency mix. 
uh, you can get the electro mix or you can get the regular emergency mix. It doesn't really matter which. If you want the electrolytes, I carry one of each. Uh, we'll go back into why later, but uh, it's good for a vitamin C boost, and it's got a and it's got a uh, number two reason to carry it around, and uh, we'll go into that in just a few minutes. Cold weather hat. It's Arkansas at summertime. It's not cold. I'm still carrying my cold weather hat. Uh, the reason why is it's got more than one use. Sure, you can use it for a cold weather hat. If it rains on me today and it turns off cold tonight, it becomes hypothermic. Uh, I can put this on my head, keep myself from losing a lot of heat. I'm bald, I need a hat. Uh, it can also keep me from getting a sunburn on my head. Also, if uh, I'm walking through the woods, I find something cool, I can use it for a storage container. I can carry stuff around with it. Uh, and uh, I can also strain water through it. Uh, you can uh, even use it to catch minnows, things like that in the water. All you gotta do is drag it through. It's kind of it's kind of a neat net. But uh, anyway, several different uses for one of these. Uh, you know, uh, no reason not to carry one, three or four bucks. This is the Army Wind Tuck version. Uh, went with Wind Tuck instead of wool. Doesn't itch as much, but it works the same way. So definitely a good item. Need to keep that in your pack. Picked up my flashlight. Uh, just a second ago, this is a simple mag light. Uh, a lot of flashlights out there these days, Pelican lights, Surefire lights. Uh, how do you choose? Well, I choose because this one's cheap. Eight, nine bucks at your local super center. They're waterproof and they're tough. As a police officer, I used one of these things for years, just the bigger version. Smaller version packs in my kit real well. I wrap some duct tape around mine, so I've got my duct tape. I wrap some engineer tape around mine. If I drop it on a dark background, I can still see it because it's got some, it's got some orange there. Uh, it's also the red light. I didn't go for the black or the camo cool camo versions. Uh, it's got two AA batteries. The batteries are readily available. I just turn one around backwards. That way, if it gets turned on in my pack, it doesn't accidentally run all my batteries down. So the batteries are still good. So simple, easy, and effective. Short mag light, duct tape, engineer tape. Eight, nine bucks uh, for that item. Talking about trapping earlier, uh, this is one that a lot of people kind of tell me I'm crazy for, but uh, I try to do things simple. I've got a wife and six kids. They're not survivalists. They don't spend every waking hour in the woods. Uh, they don't want to. It's not as much fun as it sounds, but uh, you know, if I ask my wife to build me a figure four deadfall, it's probably not gonna happen. If it does, it's not gonna happen within, uh, within two or three hours. And if she gets one set, the wind could blow it over, figure four deadfalls, Paiute deadfalls, very difficult. Uh, any kind of uh, impromptu trapping is difficult. But a rat trap, simply stated, makes it easy. They catch squirrels a lot. They catch rats a lot. They're, uh, they're a huge producer. Nine times out of ten, you can catch something with one of these, especially with a little bit of your oatmeal raisin granola bar on there. You're going to get something. Uh, enough said on that one. I'm going to go into a first aid kit. Now the first aid kit that I carry, as you'll notice, it's ugly. It's nothing fancy. Uh, I don't have to have it in some kind of a great box. I didn't, I didn't go out and buy just a uh, first aid kit. I just put things together that I know that I use. I'm out all the time and this stuff works. I write first aid on it so I know what's there in case I need to grab it. Uh, first thing is going to be uh, Bet wrap or uh, this one's Sure Flex. It's just a self adhesive bandage. It's real good for sprained ankles. It's even good for cuts, things like that. Pressure bandages. It's got a thousand uses. Uh, pick up a pick up a two or three dollar deal there, and it's great for your first aid kit. Got a uh, another small Ziploc bag. It's full of different items. I'm not going to pull every single one out, but I've got some Pepto tablets in there. Uh, I've got uh, some sting reliefs, some uh, suntan lotion or sunburn lotion, uh, sting reliefs, hand sanitizers, neosporin, several different ointments, uh, a lot of different things in there. Just put together a few as, as you think you might need them. I mean, it's outdoors. You might need some sting relief. You might need some, uh, some uh, sun lotion. Again, another cigarette lighter. Cigarette lighters always work. Even out here, there's a little breeze blowing. It works. It'll start me a fire. If my wife were to use it, it'll start a fire. If one of my kids use it, it'll start a fire. Uh, bow drill fires are a great party trick, but cigarette lighters work every single time. And guess what? They're a dollar at the dollar store. All right. Uh, again, at the dollar store, uh, first aid antiseptic. Just spray it on. It's great for cuts. 
uh, scrapes, things like that. It's going to happen in the woods, so I carry a, I carry a bottle of that around with me. Uh, nail sporing, by the way, also uh, also a petroleum product. It burns pretty good on cotton balls. Uh, latex and uh, adhesive strip bandages. I mean, all kinds of different band-aids, whatever brand you get. I've got big ones. I've got small ones. I've got knuckle bandages. I've got butterfly closures. Uh, they pack down to nothing. I keep them in a little pack here so I know exactly where all of them are. Uh, all I got to do is reach in and grab my Band-Aid pack and it's there. Some uh, pain relief also at the dollar store. Cost me a dollar. Inside this pack I keep uh, pain relief and allergy tabs. The allergy tabs are the uh, pink ones. The pain relief are the big white ones. Uh, they're cheap, so they're big and ugly, but it uh, doesn't matter to me. It cost me a dollar. I can distinguish between the two because of the colors, and I carry them both in one bottle. It'll save me a little bit of space, but, uh, you know, ibuprofen tablets, uh, uh, pain reliefs. The, uh, I carry the allergy just in case. I mean, there's always chance for uh, hay fever or you get bit or stung by something like that. You want to make sure that you can keep... Uh, Keep swelling down on stuff like that. Keep your nose open so you can breathe. Allergy pills are a good idea. Also in the first aid kit, simple medicine bottle. Holds a bottle of iodine. Uh, I use iodine for a couple of different reasons. It's good on cuts. It's the old fashioned cure, you know. Your grandma probably used this and would cure comb on you. Uh, I always had iodine used on me, but uh, it's also good for water procurement. Makes your water safe to drink. Uh, iodine is a halogen, so it may take a little bit longer in your water than some things, but the military's been using this stuff forever. Uh, I'm still using it. So, uh, most places where you buy uh, tablets for your water procurement, make your water safe to drink, it'll either be a chlorine tablet or an iodine tablet. The chlorine tablets uh, or the iodine tablets, they generally run $10, $13, 10 to 13 something like that. I think 13 for the last set that I looked at. This does exactly the same thing, but some people say iodine tastes awful. Uh, iodine tastes terrible, and it does taste terrible. That's what I use the vitamin C for. Uh, the vitamin C counteracts that taste. That way, you've got your iodine, does the killing in the water. You don't have to taste the iodine when you use these. Buck at the dollar store, a couple of bucks at a super center, uh, three bucks instead of 10 bucks, saves me a lot of money again, and you've got dual uses out of your iodine. Next thing, uh, match safe, but in this match safe, and you could use a medicine bottle, I just had an extra match safe laying around. I keep a couple of tubes of uh, single use super glue. Uh, I haven't put the lids on yet because I don't want them open, but uh, they're great for impromptu stitches. Uh, stitches out in the woods hurt. I don't like to give myself stitches because it's a painful, long, excruciating experience. So I use super glue, it'll, uh, it'll get it stitched up long enough for me to get to the hospital. Same thing they use at the hospital, if you get a cut near your eye or something where they can't use stitches, they'll use super glue on you as well. Uh, matches. I'm not a huge match fan, but I do like to carry four to five different ways to start a fire. That way I can always get a fire. But I've always said if I'm going to carry matches, I'm going to carry the real thing. These matches are more like a firework. They look like a sparkler when they go off. But you can actually immerse these in solid water, in a cup of water, uh, and pull it back out, and they're going to work. Heavy duty. Uh, they come with a couple of extra strikers in a waterproof uh, bag there, sealed on both ends. About five bucks a box, but they're definitely worth it. Uh, you know, I, like I say, I'm not a match fan. You got 24 matches, you got 24 tries. Uh, $2 for a cigarette lighter at a uh, local five and dime store or whatever. I think maybe 3,000 strikes in a cigarette lighter, so you do the math. But, like I say, four to five different ways to start a fire, that's one more way. I'm gonna go into uh, another item I've got here. It's a miscellaneous box. Uh, just to explain the box away, it's just a simple box. It's a cigarette box I found at a local, local uh, smoke shop. Picked a couple up because I like the boxes. Pour all the stuff out of it. Another cigarette lighter. NATO approved uh, military whistle. This one's uh, the issue item. It's pretty loud. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to blow it. I do want to blow it. It's pretty loud. You can hear it for a lot longer distance than you can hear your voice. Even if there's water splashing in the background, uh, somebody can hear you blowing the whistle. I've got a uh, 
half a half a hacksaw blade. I just buy these in packages. I break them in half. Uh, carry uh, carry an extra one around in my kit. It's good for sawing through small bones on rabbits, squirrels, things like that. Save your knife a little wear and tear. A uh, couple of extra batteries for my uh, for my flashlight and a fire starter. One more way to start a fire. Uh, this is a small ranger style. Comes with uh, its own striker. Everything tied together so I can't lose it. Gives you a pretty decent spark. It's a ferrocium rod and uh, you know, it gets pretty hot. So one more way to start a fire. Next thing I'll talk about is a uh, fishing kit. Uh, everything that I need pretty much for fishing is in this little box. I got one other item I'll pull over in a second but uh, Katie if we can kind of pan out over here. I'm going to dump all this out over here and I don't know if I can get it all in my hand but everything that I have packs pretty tightly in this box. When I say tightly I mean tightly. One more cigarette box. An entire package of uh, small hooks just you know uh, I put an entire package in because they pack small enough that I don't have to worry about uh, not packing them I'm not Rambo so I don't carry two hooks and uh, two matches and ten feet of cord uh, I don't pretend to be Rambo and don't want to be we had it pretty rough uh, a bobber just in case some uh, these are uh, some little uh, Mini tail lures, uh, just regular crappie jigs, the crappie jig heads, also with the small hooks. Whole package of slip shot. Uh, it's pretty good, uh, pretty good for just about anything fishing wise. A couple of rooster tails. Uh, rooster tails are my favorite lure, and uh, you know they're just a treble hook spinner. Put those back in here so they don't get hooked all over everything. Fishing line. I have. Uh, four fishing line bobbins. I keep those on a bobbin. You might have seen those in your wife's or your your uh, mother's sewing machine or playing around those. You may be able to steal a couple off of them or you can get them for for a dollar at the local uh, super center. That's where I got mine because uh, mom told me I couldn't have any of hers. Uh, anyway, they hold a ton of line and I've got four of them there so I've got four tons of line. Another package of larger hooks. The larger hooks I use with the bank line, the bank line uh, I use for a, for a trout line. Trout line fishing is probably one of the easiest ways to fish in a survival situation. You can set 10 hooks and you can walk away and leave them. Uh, all you gotta do is find some worms or some grubs, something like that, bait them, uh, set it up, leave it, come back later. Uh, mini tool, this helps me with my split shot. Uh, maybe uh, getting a hook out of a fish's mouth, something like that, but it's one extra tool in case uh, in case my multi-tool goes south on me or I lose it, something like that, drop it. I've got one little extra tool there. I like having extras of things, and these uh, Swiss Tech mini tools are excellent, really good tools. Another cigarette lighter. A little bit smaller because the box is smaller. And then uh, some steel leaders. These steel leaders uh, pack up pretty small. Of course, they're good for fishing. That's why most people get them. Uh, I like them for fishing, especially on that trot line. But if you'll notice how I've got it there, and I'm hoping you can pick this up on the camera there, Katie. They make a really good snare for uh, setting up outside a rabbit hole, uh, setting up out you know, on a squirrel pole, something like that. Uh, I've got several of those. They're a couple of bucks for a pack of six or ten. Uh, get those at just about any fishing section in any store. Moving on past the fishing kit, uh, paracord uh, needs no introduction really. It's 550 pound test paracord. Some people will say uh, carry carry different colors, you know, uh, hunter orange things like that, and I have. But I've got my I've got my 130 feet or my 260 feet 130 pound test bank line that's lime yellow. So I do have a different color, but uh, uh, this is what I came up with the last time, and it's pretty new, so there's no need to replace it or anything. But I got 100 feet, 550 pound test paracord. Uh, you can get it at any uh, surplus store. You can get it online. I uh, know you can get it at Major Bill's Military Surplus there in Jonesboro. So no, no need not to have some of this stuff. Uh, 50 feet, 
Uh, 100 feet carries just like 50 feet, so why not have 100 feet? You can use it from everything from fishing to sewing up your gear to uh, to making shelters. So definitely an item you got to have in your kit. Moving on, a couple of bandanas. Uh, this is a uh, camo one. No really, uh, no real reason. I just like it because it's macho. I've got another one that's red. The red one is uh, still kind of macho, I guess, but. Uh, it's good for signaling, uh, makes a nice flag. Uh, you can hang it on the outside of your debris hut so somebody can see you. If you don't want somebody to see you, don't put it on your debris hut. Uh, I carry two instead of one. One of them I can wet, put it on my head because I got a bald head. You can wear one, you can use one for a bandage, you can use one to collect water, you can use one to run water through. A thousand and ten uses, you know, pressure bandages, tourniquets, slings, whatever you needed to use it for. And you got one to wear, one to use for other, for other uses. So carry a cup. Uh, talking about fire with all the cigarette lighters that I carry. Uh, simple, basic stuff. I try to simplify everything so anybody can use it. A couple of medicine bottles full of Vaseline and cotton balls. Cotton balls, Vaseline slathered on the outside. We'll get into those more when uh, when we talk about the fire in uh, later segments. But they burn for three to five minutes each. They pack and they're almost free. You probably got cotton balls, Vaseline, and a couple of medicine bottles at the house. No reason you shouldn't have a couple with you right now. Uh, one more thing on fire, uh, tea light candles. I got a package of six of those tea light candles available at most dollar stores. I think I got a package of 50 for two bucks, something like that. They're just regular little small wax candles. They come in a little metal, metal uh, housing of their own. I've seen my water or I've seen my wife float these in water in a little uh, aquarium looking thing, a fish fish bowl or whatever, and they stayed lit. So I thought if she can float it on water, I gotta use it for survival. A few of these can heat up your car if you're out on a cold night and you're stalled down. Uh, you can cook with a few of these. Uh, heat up that uh, cup of soup we've got in our canteen cup. Definitely good uh, for your morale, if you can't get a fire going, no other way. You can always have a little bit of light in your uh, shelter. Uh, drinking tube. Uh, if you've ever seen a Army or Air Force survival manual, you've probably seen the uh, solar steel, picture of the solar steel. Uh, it's got that picture coming off the side that says drinking tube. This is a drinking tube. You can also use it for siphoning gas. If, uh, if you don't think building a solar stair just Solar still justifies having one of these things. Use it to siphon gas. Use it for a vacuum line on your vehicle if your vehicle breaks down. You can use it for uh, you can use it for a gas line on a dirt bike. You can use it for any number of things. But I packed one last summer. We were in the Mojave Desert. A lot of the water that was there in the desert was in cracks uh, in the surface. It was. Uh, it was uh, in between some rocks, you couldn't really get to it. The only way you could get to it is if you had something like this or a straw. So this is kind of my survival straw. Staying with the water thing, uh, canteen cup. Canteen cup uh, is used to cook. It's used to procure water. You can reach in and dip water down uh, out of the uh, lake or the pond or whatever with it or a spring. Uh, you can boil water straight in it over a campfire. You can do any number of things with it. Uh, mine. I have a, uh, have a little stove that just slips on the bottom like that. It's got a cutout in the back, so it fits around the handles, but uh, you can put that uh, straight down on the ground and you can cook straight with that little stove. Pine cone underneath it, a uh, few limbs, small limbs underneath it, and you can boil water, you can melt snow uh, to get you some drinking water. They both fit together just like that. The canteen cup handles fold flat, so People say that's pretty big, but I use mine to store other things in, bandanas, cold weather hat, just uh, smush it down in there, and I really haven't lost any space. So it stores uh, fairly decent, even though it's kind of big round shape. Uh, still, in the top of my pack, I can store a lot of other stuff in it so I don't lose anything, but that's probably one of the best tools I can have other than the knife in my kit. Can't say enough about it, but uh, try to conserve time, so we'll go into that more in the water procurement and uh, food sections. Shelter. Uh, shelter. I carry plastic drop cloth. This is a 9 by 12, 108 square feet. Cost you two or three bucks at your local super center. You can uh, use this to make a cover for your uh, debris hut. Works better than leaves and uh, sticks for rain. 
keeps the rain off your head. Also, if you're uh, worrying about a wet ground, you can line the ground with this thing. Uh, after you line the ground with it, you can lay on it. keeps water and moisture from coming up out of the ground and getting into your backside. So definitely something uh, worth having. Also works good to make that solar steel we were talking about. Trash bags, the big 55 gallon super size type, the heavy mill ones. Uh, got a couple of those in my pack. They make great ponchos. Uh, they make uh, decent tube tents, although, uh, you know, 55 gallon ones are, are pretty decent for a tube tent, but, you know, I mean, they're not perfect. But they're great for ponchos. They're also great to line anything uh, similar to the plastic drop cloth, except they, uh, you know, they've got one sealed in, so you just cut your face hole in it, and you can use it for any number of things. Stuff it full of leaves, and you've got a hobo sleeping bag. Uh, once again, talk about uh, Ziploc bags. They're great for water procurement. They hold water. If you find water, you need a way to store it. Uh, Ziploc bags are a great way to do that. That's why I put a lot of stuff in Ziploc bags, because I can keep it all separated. If I need my shelter stuff, I can pull it straight out. If I need my first aid stuff, I can just pick it straight up. I know exactly where everything's at, because it's all in its own Ziploc bag. Squeeze the air out of it, close it, and uh, it's ready to go. Last item that I carry in, uh, in my kit is a commercial kit. The reason that I carry this is because uh, I show it to my students mainly, but uh, kind of shows you the price range on a kit. This kit retails for 40 bucks. Uh, the kit that I've got put together here, you, if you build it from scratch, bag included, uh, you know, you can probably build the entire thing for about 200, 225 if you've got a Leatherman Wave in it. Uh, and the $15 knife. If you put the Tom Brown knife in it, then you add another 100 bucks, you know, free 25. But if you do, uh, if you have your own knife, you have a multi-tool already at the house, most of the items you'll probably have in your tackle box for fishing, you know, it's probably gonna cost you about 100, 150 bucks, depending on the bag that you pick out. This thing's 40 bucks, and you don't know what's in it. Some guy packed it in a factory, you have no idea whether he has your best interest at heart or not. Uh, this one is a good one. Uh, I've, I've taken it out of the package. I've looked at all the components. Uh, I do carry it to keep, uh, to show my students uh, the different price range, but also small kit like this supplements my big kit. It's got my signal mirror in it. It's got a Fresnel lens, just a small magnifying lens for starting fires. It's got a little more duct tape, some smaller cord, another whistle. It's got another fire starter in it, just one more way to start fire. It's got a small compass in it, so it's got a few items in it that supplement my bigger kit. Uh, also, I can pull this one straight out of my kit. It's got my fire cord, all this different stuff in there. I can slip this into my back pocket if I'm going into an office building or something where uh, an ultra cool looking camo back might not be might not be welcome. So this thing can slip into my jacket pocket uh, and go unnoticed. So. That's pretty much everything that I carry in my basic everyday carry kit. That goes into my vehicle. It supplements my vehicle kit. Like I say, this is installment one of several. I'm not sure how many we're going to have yet, but we're going to be going over all of the basics. We keep things simple. Uh, our motto is, if a 10-year-old can't do it, we don't teach it, which is a motto I'm really proud of. Uh, so we hope to see you guys in the later installments. Uh, check us out. Arkansas Outdoor Adventure Training brought to you by Major Bills Military Surplus. Thanks.